Good morning and happy 4th of July to you all this morning. If you have your Bible today on this Lord's Day, would you turn with me to Hosea chapter 12, verse 7. Hosea chapter 12, verse 7. Today we celebrate the independence of our nation, and uh, we have it's fitting that it would happen on the Lord's Day. And so we hope that we can uh, keep that in mind as we study through this uh, passage in Hosea as he speaks words of truth from God's lips to the people of his day and I uh, hope that they can speak to you today. Hosea chapter 12 verse 7 reading from the English Standard Version a merchant in whose hands are false balances he loves to oppress. Ephraim has said, Ah, but I am rich. I have found my wealth for myself. In all my labors, they cannot find in me iniquity or sin. I am the Lord your God, and from the land of Egypt I will again make you dwell in tents, as in the days of the appointed feast. I spoke to the prophets. It was I who multiplied visions, and through the prophets gave parables. If there is iniquity in Gilead, they shall surely come to nothing. In Gilgal, they sacrifice bulls. Their altars are also like stone heaps and on the furrows of the field. Jacob fled to the land of Aram. There Israel served for a wife and for a, for a wife he guarded sheep. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel up from Egypt and by a prophet he was guarded. Ephraim has given bitter provocation so his Lord will leave his blood guilt on him and will pay him for his disgraceful deeds. Today, as we think about Hosea's words to uh, the people of his day, and we think about our own uh, country and our own uh, celebration, the celebration of independence, I want us to uh, also contemplate the, this idea that Hosea is presenting here. And uh, in, in these words, uh, so long ago to us and I want to declare us today to make a declaration of dependence it would sound to be uh, same seem to be a little bit contradictory but I want to and hope to show you through the scripture where that is necessary for what we call independence Hosea's problem and Hosea's day was that he was given the task uh, by God to uh, to warn the people of his nation and his uh, kindred nation to the south that they were not doing what God wanted them to do and that they should quickly and, and completely repent of that and turn back to God. Of course, this is uh, the central message of the scriptures that we have fallen from grace of God and that we've all sinned and that the, the, that sin leads to death and therefore we must uh, turn to God for life forgiveness and life because he is the uh, the only one who can forgive us and the only one who can uh, keep us and therefore this is the message of the Bible from front to back uh, and uh, it seems simple and God uses uh, numerous and vast amounts of examples of people that he has granted these uh, freedoms to and made known this message and yet uh, it's simple as it seems it apparently is terribly difficult as we've all struggled uh, to find, to realize and to accept, and even today some do not, and many do not actually, accept the reality that first off, they are sinners, and second off, that they need to repent of that sin uh, uh, to, the, to the living God. Uh, they disagree that there's even a God. They disagree there's such a thing as sin. They disagree that they've done any of this and of need, if there is a God, that they need anything from him and therefore so on and so forth. And so in a sense, a long, long time ago, our ancestors and we also have declared our independence from God. And the resulting problems are uh, numerous and well recorded throughout history. And today, as we celebrate this, it uh, might be mindful to us to remember something that seems to be lost upon all of us in uh, this country. Uh, is uh, this idea of in, uh, Independence Day that we were at? We were celebrating an independence, a declaration of independence, if you will, from the onerous uh, uh, care of the of the Eng English king. That we were breaking away from that king and from Great Britain, uh, England, 
and uh, their uh, authority over us. And so we declared our independence from them and from their oppressive nature uh, and many things that were associated with that, uh, not from God. As a matter of fact, if you allow me to read just the b briefest uh, part of the preamble uh, to the Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. One of the things that we declared our independence, that, that, that it was obvious that we had certain rights. These rights that we claim today and the rights that everyone is claiming today did not come through their own efforts, through their own work, or by their own machinations or their own work, if you will, but because of our creator. The writers of the Declaration of Independence, those people who signed it, the people who were behind the Constitution, and all the things that we hold near and dear that we are celebrating, albeit many of us are out at the beach, out at the boat, out doing other things today to celebrate this independence, this holiday, if you will, uh, have and ignoring, if you will, if, if, to the very least, and maybe just not even giving any thought to it on any day, that their creator is who gave us this, that they recognize that we had a creator, that we are not pond scum evolved from some, uh, some microorganism in some scummy pond, or that we're not evolved from some other form of uh, creation, some other animal that we are uniquely and wonderfully made and purposely uh, separated from all other uh, living things in uh, God's creation by an image of God in us, according to the Bible. And so therefore, these things that we hold self-evident are not so self-evident if you do not have a creator, but you are pond scum evolution material. I always like to point out to people that who don't believe this, you have no constitution, you have no declaration of independence, you have nothing. Because these things were all, and if you read them yourself, founded upon the idea that there is a God and a creator. All of our founding fathers, regardless of what you might think about them, all had an understanding that this country that we hold dear and that we are declaring today to be celebrating these 245 years of independence from England, the oppressive England, is founded upon what we call Christian principles, upon the idea of God. A creator God, not upon something evolved from pond scum or low other forms of, of created life. So today I would call us back as Hosea is calling his own people back to a declaration of dependence, a dependence upon God. Necessary for one to have independence from anything. Here we find right away that the, the, what are the traps? What are the things that call, call, drew, draw us away? Hosea says right away in verses 7 and, and 8 here that there's a deception of wealth and well-being. There is a deceptive nature about wealth and well-being. That somehow or other that, that, that people who are deceivers have, are trying to oppress us. People in that day, and this is uh, throughout the Bible, by the way, I would suggest you read it sometime. Throughout the Bible, you will find one of the illustrations of, of the height of oppressiveness and the height of, of deception is the false scales. What does that mean? That the idea was that you weighed things out. They weighed things. They, they gave value to things based upon their weight and weighed out the money. They weighed out the, pro the products that you got. And so it was predicated upon the fact that they were fair. And one of the things that God was quick to say to his people when he called them out and gave them their mission was that you always are fair. You do not use a deceptive scale because this was the, was the such as the was the world that people would lie and cheat and steal from one another. And that the very fact that people do that is that they want to oppress you. They want to get an advantage over you. And there is a deception in wealth. Why? Because people thought if I'm wealthy, I must be fine. If I'm wealthy, I'm protected from everything. If I'm wealthy, I'll be healthier. I'll be live longer. And I'll, 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 and if you believe in God, there's even people today who still pr pronounce this declaration that somehow it shows the favor of God upon you that you're wealthy, that you must be doing everything right. So whether you're lying, cheating, or stealing, or whatever you're doing, it's okay because, see, I'm wealthy. That proves that God is in favor of me. Go on in verse 8. There, we see something else. We see the idea of pride, which goes right along with what I was saying. He says, Ephraim has said, ah, but I am rich and I found my, a wealth for myself and all my fat labors, they cannot find in me iniquity or sin. 
The idea that somehow or other the fact that I'm wealthy or healthy does not preclude or in any way say, as, he, as Ephraim, that the people here are saying, that that means I haven't sinned because they already, we can see they're theologically uh, made a big mistake here. They have decided that because they are wealthy and reasonably healthy that they have not sinned. That's proof positive. And that is such a lie that has been perpetuated forever and ever and ever. And it goes on and on. It was in Jesus' day. It's in today. People have made millions off of the idea that somehow or other, if you're wealthy and healthy, it's because God is pleased with you and therefore keep on doing what you're doing. There is a deception. This country has been beneficiaries of hard work and hard work based upon the idea that we were endowed by our creator. That the country without God is a country without hope. All these things you can read. If you get the daily news today, all I suggest, there's lots of junk in there, but you can look in there. There is a page, a couple pages in, that gives a list of all the founding fathers and all kinds of different things that happened in our history that shows that this country was founded upon what we call Christian principles, on the, on the belief in God who is watching over us and that we owe homage to and deference to. Of course, that's not popular and it's not, it's often refuted and disputed by the politicians because they aren't interested in following anybody. They want to do what they want to do as always and they perpetuate that. That's not followed by science because that denies upon your pond scum evolution to say that. And yet we, we are here today on this very day, the Declaration of Independence, the 4th of July, celebrating our independence based upon a creator which was based upon the reality of a creator and the vast majority of this country, unfortunately, is given nothing to that, believes not that, trusts not that, and if they do, they have a terrible way of showing. It's one thing to say something, it's another to do something as a result of what you really believe. And here's the thing, this is what happens. We deceive ourselves, we're wealthy, we're healthy, this is the greatest country in the world, I'm not doubting that. However, here's the thing. That greatness is predicated upon something. And if we claim that, that, that it, it invalidates everything we do, because we are so great, we have made a fatal mistake. That makes it upon our shoulders and not upon the shoulders of God, not upon him and trust in him. Many, many, many people have found that their wealth was not found favorable to God because not because of the wealth, but because of the way they handled it and what they gave it credit for. The pride that we have is well-founded if we are proud to have done so well with what God is giving us and is granting us every day. That we are working for a living God, that we are glad to say that we are, have been born in a country that believes in God and trusts in God. And yet that's not necessarily true. The country, in spite of the fact that it was declared many, a couple hundred years ago or less, that this is a Christian nation founded upon Christian principles. That doesn't mean every person is a Christian, but the principles behind what we are celebrating today and what motivated us to go forward and declare our dependence is predicated upon a trust in a God because without a God, there is no Christ. Without a Christ, there is no Christian and therefore there are no principles. And to deny the very reality of that is to deny and, uh, the, at our peril these things that are true and claim that we can hold something that we have never held without the power of God. Listen to me, folks. This is very important. There are a lot of people out there who are celebrating something they have no idea about. They don't, they don't know anything about the Bible, nor do they want to. We've kicked that out of schools. And, and by the way, our education system, as we understand it, was predicated upon uh, the study of the Bible and upon Christians who wanted out and wanted people to be able to learn how to read. Oh, my goodness, we can't say that. That's terrible. Our pride is going to be our downfall. Our pride is going to be our downfall. Our ignorance is our downfall. These things catch up with us. God was so aware of all of this so far and so long ago that when his people, he called out and gave them the opportunity to have something they could have never gotten for themselves, and they acknowledged it in the book of Deuteronomy, said this in chapter 8. He said this through Moses his great prophet, his great leader, he said this to them 
as a warning. He said, beware lest you say in your heart, my power and my might and my hand have gotten me this well. Beware lest you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand has gotten me this well. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 17, verse 18. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get well, that he may confer, confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Verse uh, 19, if you forget the Lord your God and go after other gods and serve them and worship them, I will solemnly warn you today that you are surely perished. Mo, uh, Hosea is today in his lifetime, in his writings here, is declaring this a truth. He is saying, folks, you have turned back from this. You're not following God, uh, what this. You've gone and given yourself credit. They were making all these deals. We've talked about them in the past Sundays. I won't go over it. But they were believed that they were able to, by their own uh, conniving and treaties and machinations, work a balance between the two great powers that wanted to have them, which was Egypt and Assyria. And in their treaties and in their going back and forth and all their negotiating and all their diplomatic power, they, were, they, were, they would find themselves shortly at, at the hand of both of these uh, great nations destroyed, perished, taken into captivity. Deception of wealth and well-being is not, is not conducive to independence. One must declare that we are dependent upon God. That's what Hosea said. Remember how you got this. Then there is the deception of independence. Independence can deceive us some ways. And it seems to have uh, uh, constantly done this throughout history in different nations, different people. We, we uh, find ourselves uh, at two places here. One, we have these uh, group of people who, re who are ignorant of all history. Right? They won't read the Bible because even if it was a history book, they won't read it because, well, it's... You know, they're afraid that somehow they're going to become religious. I think that's fascinating. They, 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 re, they refuse to read world history as it was written by many others in the past because, well, that's so old and dusty. It has nothing to do with me. And so, therefore, they have no idea. And today, when, the, when people decided that, so you've got the ignorant and then you've got the other people. The people who say, you know, what we need to do is take advantage of these ignorant people who have no idea of history. What we will do is we will rewrite it. We will go back and rewrite history. We'll change the actual things that happened and call them something else. And declare, and you know what? Nobody will care because they don't have a clue. They'll say that must be the way it always was because, well, that's the way it, they wouldn't read to find out. Can you imagine somebody going back and taking all the pictures of you as a child and your family and all those things and photoshopping them and writing you out? You never existed. You know, there are people today who would be perplexed by the fact that there is no picture of them because all those pictures, somehow somebody got a hold of them and wrote them out. They didn't exist. And here they stand saying, well, I must, but therefore I am. Here I am. I must exist. No, you don't because, see, there's no pictures of you. You don't have a family. Well, I was there. I thought, no, that doesn't make any difference. You see, today we declare our independence and we, we deceive ourselves that we are somehow independent. I don't need anything and we need everything. The past year has shown us that there are many, many things that we are dependent on and yet we are not. Here in the Bible, he says, <clears throat> if you will, in verse 9, God tries to warn them. Notice that God warned. Of course, if you don't believe in God and you don't listen to this and you don't read any of God's word, and that, that, that's to everybody out there who tells me all the time and tells anybody else that asks them, whether it's me or any other party, do you, oh, I believe in God. What does he say? Well, how do you know? Well, I, I, when did you do, what does this Bible say? Well, I, 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 that was written by me and I don't believe none of that. Well, how do you believe in a God that's declared in the Bible when you don't have any idea? What do you don't understand? There's no facts. There's nothing to support your house. Your house is floating in some kind of thin air. Well, anyway, God says in verse 9, I am the Lord your God from the land of Egypt. And again, I will make you dwell in tents in the days of appointment. What is he saying? He said, hey, I got you out of Egypt. These people had some better than us. They seem to remember some of their history. If they ignored it, that's one thing. They remembered it. They say, well, how was he talking about? Well, you remember he got us out of Egypt. 
We, we couldn't get out of Egypt because we were slaves heavily outnumbered and outmaneuvered. And God declared us free and we were able to get out of there by miracle after miracle. We survived when nobody should have. Our clothes, our ancestors' clothes didn't even wear out. Well, we, they're all kind of miracles. And we, we're here because God got us out. I got you out. And you lived in tents. Until I gave you a land to park in and you built buildings, right, that they're living in today in this time of Hosea. I gave you all that stuff. And I can take you back to the tent living. You see, we as America thought we are so fiercely independent. We are so, we can do this, we can do that. And we've done great. I'm not, don't, don't, don't hear me here. I'm not down in America. What I'm down in is this idea that America even exists and can even perpetuate without God. And we're here today celebrating the independence of our country from the breakaway from, from England, from an oppressive king. And we are doing that without knowledge and would quickly and fast take out the words creator and all the other references to some sort of God out of the Constitution, out of the, our documents, and out of the records of our founding fathers. Because people said that stuff is not true. And they don't want that because it's inconvenient. I'm here to tell you today, you read the Declaration of Independence and you forget about the creator part, then you have nothing. The people who wrote that thought that was important enough to put that in because it was important. They weren't trying to play to some political game. They believed that. So he says here, he says, I did this. He said, but I can put you back. Last year, we went through this horrible uh, pandemic. Hundreds of thousands and millions of people died. And people said, it was terrible. God did it. Well, I don't know whether God did it or not, but God certainly knew about it and, and was, was standing around going, you know, how long do you think that you guys in this country and the rest of the world can play around with these deadly germs and things and create weapons out of them without some of it getting back and biting you. How long can you play with that snake before he bites you? And what makes you think, oh, we got this. We're so smart. We're so brilliant. We can do all this stuff. And we've done great things. The fact that everybody didn't die is, is a miracle. But the, the, the fact is that, that it even happened is a result of our own arrogance. To think somehow or other that we have that we can control something that's beyond our control. You see, we are not the creators of things. That is God's business. Anyway, he goes on to say here, he said, I can do this. He said, the truth is, I'm the one who makes this happen. I'm the one who got you out. Don't forget about that. And I'm the one you're ignoring. I'm the one you're violating. He goes on to say, the reality is that you are you were slaves. And until I got you out, you couldn't. The reality is everybody who lived in the United States of America, the country, the uh, North America, the, in, in this country we call the United States, all of them were subject to the King of England. They were subjects to the King of England. That's what we declared our independence from. Not from God. We declared our independence from the King of England. And so... Why? Why could we say that we had the right to that independence? Because there is a creator who said so. They had reached a point where it had violated what they believed was the creator's edicts, the creator's intentions. I'm always laughing about people who think that they have some ground to stand on when they have no God, they have no rock, they have no anchor, they have no solid footing. You see, we would all be slaves of the England. And today, people, in spite of the fact that they want to go back and relive history and declare that they're all still slaves again, I'm pretty sure that the slaves would be looking at them. Some of these people saying, I don't think you got that. I don't think you understand. Some of us, when all of us are slaves, we'd all be saying, we're all slaves. And I care to have you, uh, assure you that there are plenty of people, powerful people, who would doesn't care what color your skin is, they would love to make you a slave. Now, you wouldn't want to call, call yourself a slave because the Jews never called themselves slaves in Jesus' day. And clearly they were slaves of the Roman Empire. But when asked about it, they said, we've never been enslaved to anybody. That was the biggest, fattest lie I've ever heard in my life. 
That's a joke. And so here we would, we would enslave ourselves to the government. We let the government tell us when we can go to the bathroom, when we can eat, when we can't, and who can live and who can die, and this, that, and the other. What did we declare our independence from anyway? And yet we're quickly trying to give the government everything. Here, take this power away from me. Take away my God because he's, and once they take away the God and get people convinced that doesn't matter, then you know what? We have no creator, and so therefore we have no right to our declaration of independence. Well, we don't want to make that mistake. We don't want to make that mistake. What happens? Look at verse 10. God is keenly aware that this goes on throughout history. He says in verse 10, I spoke to the prophets. It was I who multiplied their visions and through the prophets gave parables. What does he say? He says there, I'm the one who, gave, who told you all these things. I'm the one who gave you freedom, but I'm also the one who told you how to keep it and how to protect it and how to serve me and what I wanted and what you should do and how you can prosper. I told you all that stuff. I sent you people look just like you to tell you this. Now, remember, and I won't go back and rehash that, but remember this kind of idea that Hosea is tying together here was Jacob. Jacob, the ancestral father of these people. Jacob, who, who was renamed Israel. That's where they got their name from. Israel, right? The one who, who was the conniver. Jacob was a conniver. He was a deceiver. He was a person who was always using his intellect and his, it, it, well, his intellect to get his way. He, he out, tried to outmaneuver everybody. He out, tried to outmaneuver his brother. Tried to outmaneuver his father-in-law. He tried to... He was always outmaneuvering people by his will. You know, the United States of America make a fatal mistake when we think we have gotten all this stuff by ourselves, by our own might and, and fight that we achieved all these things in spite of the fact that the odds were against us. When we declared our independence, the odds were against us. The mightiest navy in the world existed. The mightiest army in the world existed. And we were, it was against us. And we... We, we think that we got this because we are so smart. That's the first mistake we make. They think I got all my stuff by my own power, by my own mind and will. And here's what happens is, guess what? It's all predicated on you holding on to it then. And I don't know about you, but the older I get, the less grip I got. He says... I gave you these people. I warned you. I gave you re the reason. I kept reminding you and reminding you. Let me point out one little fact to you. You see, Jacob, the conniver, who became Israel, the great leader, the great namesake of the people, even to this day. Jacob, while he was Jacob, was not trying to find God. Go back and read the story. God came down to wrestle with Jacob. God came down to Jacob and said, let's wrestle, boy. Let's have a match and see who's going to do what. It was God who came. He didn't have to. He didn't have to do any of that. He could have said, work it out for yourself. You're on your own. Have a blast. See how it all turns out. I've been guilty. of I still say that to some people. Go ahead. I got nothing else to say. I mean, you can do it. Try it and see. Let me know how it turns out at the end. He said, I came. He comes down to wrestle with you. He's even wrestling with some of you this morning. He's wrestling with us. He's wrestling with America. He said, how much stuff has to go wrong and sideways and upside down and things you thought you had control over, you have no control over, things you thought you made, you could lose it just like that. Snap of a finger, boom, it's gone like it never happened. Let me tell you something. Verse 11 tells us the story. He says that there's iniquity in Gilead. I will surely, they will surely come to nothing. If Gilgal, they sacrifice bulls, their altars are made of stones and heat on the furs of the field. Guess what? What is he talking about? What he's talking about here is Gilead was a place of, of bloodshed and blood things. And Gilead was a terrible place. Gilead represented a bad thing. And he says, it is going to come to nothing. There won't be nothing left. It will just be wiped out like it was never there. It was a great place. It'll be gone. If they've done it, it'll get done. It'll happen. He says, Gilgal, 
If they're Gilgal in that day and time, they had great altars built up and sacrificed these animals to these foreign gods that God was so offended by anyway. And what got this, uh, what God had got become the, of his people worse than everything and nothing. He said, they'll be like nothing. These altars they have built up, they'll be like nothing. Just rocks in a field. Just rocks in a field. This great country we have is, is held up by the mighty God. Uh, his patience is uh, unmeasurable. And yet at the same time, we sit around and we play, a, uh, we play a deadly game. We keep thinking that our pride and our wealth will get us somewhere. And we ignore. We celebrate all kinds of things. And as quick as we do, we ignore the God who gave it to us. Who said that you had the right to life, liberty, and happiness. The creator. Listen, places of greatness will fall. And people of fame will fail. These famous people, their names written down will fail. Because they're just people. And these stones and these buildings, if you don't believe that, just go back and rewind. Get you a little uh, Google search on what all they've tore down. If it wasn't for a little bit of resistance to every building that would be torn down. Because the people of anarchy and chaos are looking to not do nothing but tear down everything that we had that reminds us of anything that we had to do. They're going to go out and grind off the Ten Commandments out of the Supreme Court. They'll render it useless by flooding it with people. They'll do all kinds of things to tear down everything. Because why? Because history might cause somebody to remember that why we're here, that we had a creator. Well, God said that there were guards, that he appointed guards to his covenant. What does that mean? In verse 12, he said that Jacob had fled to, 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 to Aram. And the Israel served for a wife. In other words, he had had to flee when he was Jacob, and he served his father-in-law to get his wife. He had to guard sheep, and he said it was a prophet that uh, brought them up out from Egypt. That prophet was Moses, and that prophet is the one who was guarded. That there's always been somebody who guarded them, somebody who led her. Jacob went from being the person who was a conniver and deceiver to the person who, who represented them as, as a one who had gave himself to God. And, and that's why his name was changed. And now he was one who was following God. And that was what they said. He said, this guy is following me. He's led you and got you. But you guys are ignoring his very the very namesake of you. And Moses, who they held in high regard, he was uh, guarded you. And now you are throwing off all of this stuff and getting rid of it. The Constitution, the very things we're founded on, have rendered them neutral by saying it's a living document. Somehow or other, it changes all the time. That somehow, whatever it was, it doesn't matter. And, and we want to get rid of that. We just want to make it about whatever I think today. Things that our Creator endowed us with. That don't matter if you don't have a creator. We can say whatever we can name, whatever that is. They have rejected God's grace. If you look at verse 14, this is the outcome. When one does not cast off the guards and, re and removes all restraints and every man uh, did what was right in his own eyes, as the Bible tells us, this is what happens. Ephraim has given, uh, was given bitter provocation. So his Lord will leave him in his blood guilt. On him, and he will repay him for his disgraceful deeds. What's happened here? Ephraim, the people of Israel, the northern kingdom that Hosea is proclaiming this terrible situation to, and giving them and giving them opportunity after opportunity. He says, "This is what God says. If this is why you're going to be. Then this is what you're going to get. You have provoked me. You have made me angry, and you now have created this situation, and it's going to be on your heads." How many of you, I don't care what you believe, want to pay the consequences of everything you've ever done wrong? Who wants the full weight of the law of this land to fall upon you for everything you've done wrong? Do you see what I'm saying? This is what it is. Who wants to have the weight of all of the physical maladies that could come from everything that you did wrong in your youth? Who would love to have that? How many people would like to have happen to them everything that happens day to day to people? 
We don't get that. We don't pick and choose, but we have these people. They have that every time we drove uh, and and did something with our vehicle that was way outside the boundaries of science and physics, and somehow we survived, and yet many don't. You see, when we reject God, there is a consequence. When we ignore the, when we declare our independence from God, and that therefore He does not exist, and I do not need Him, then we get that job ourselves we get to see how long we can sustain it how long we can keep this thing running how long will it be you see we've cast off all all kinds of things all kinds of things our national debt grows larger and larger and everybody says amen send me some more money like it's just doesn't matter we uh we declare all kinds of things illegal and yet we trade and do business and hug necks and kiss faces with the enemies that would take us over in a minute. That's what Israel was doing. They were trying to work a deal between Egypt and Assyria, trying to play them off against each other. And what happens is it ends up collapsing on top of them. We have two great enemies that right now, economically and socially and culturally, that's Russia and China. They've been our enemies. They declared themselves our enemies, and yet we embrace them. Most of the fireworks we shoot off will be made in China. <laughs> Most of the electronics we have come from China. I'm just saying how we are so intertwined with our enemies, how we have tried to make deals. And we say, well, we have to because we can't survive. That's because we don't have a God. That we don't believe him, that I can sustain you. I can keep you. You know what the number one most popular song is? When it comes to Fourth of July, I find these things fascinating, and perhaps I've overplayed them sometimes. I guess people just don't seem to get the message. I find it just—I don't want to say funny because it's not laughable funny. It's just amazing to somebody like me because my mind just works in a weird way, and I think. What, how terribly inconsistent, how terribly inconsistent when we declare our independence and celebrate our independence in 1776, represented by our Declaration of Independence, and it's wrought with beginning with the idea that we have this right to independence because of a creator which we have practically wiped out and which people who claim to be Christians and Bible believers and church members have no time for, they have time for the beach, time for the boat, time for this, time for that. But they have no time to give any homage to God. They have no understanding of it. When they're asked about it, they say, oh, yeah, or oh, I don't know. Well, it doesn't really matter. It's personal, blah, blah, blah. So they mean that it's a blow off. It's just a wipe off. And some of the great songs that will be sung and represented the, the, the sense of our independence. And yet the history of these songs, if you go back and read them and read about the history of them, where they came from, you find yourself fascinated by it you cannot ignore it the greatest song one of the most popular songs on the fourth of july is mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the lord first line first line this lord he is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored he had loosed the faithful lightning light of his terrible swift sword do you know where this came from this came from some of Northern soldiers held in a Confederate prison in horrible conditions where 13,000 of them died of starvation in an effort to free the slaves who didn't really, you know, believe that we were all uh, against them and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, the point is this person come up with this and it was later caught up by this woman, Juliet Ward Howe, who turned it into a song. And there's a great history about that. You should look at that. The lines in that song are wrought with the belief in a God. These men who had no future, no hope, who were dying of starvation, typhoid, and every other kind of disease, captured in prison, fighting to free, fighting for the country that you all and I have the privilege of living in these years, and say to themselves, well, you know, this Lord, they were the ones who shouted out to God. They were the ones who called out to God. They were the ones who gave God the credit for anything that was worth getting. And yet today we ignore God. We do center and write him off this country and this government that we serve today. 
would no sooner write off God, gave no nothing but lip service at the very least, declare anything and everything okay because it, they want it to be, claim nothing of God. God says nothing about it. They say, God don't know. This is my choice. I get to do this. I get to do that. Blah, 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 blah. Well, what's the Bible say? What, what can we hope for? Romans 12, 2, 1 and 2 says this, Paul writing to the church, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice and wholly acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. God says, Ephraim, you're going to get everything you worked hard for, everything you said you wanted. Now, they, did, they would have said that we didn't ask for that. Yeah, you did. You ignored me. You resisted me. You put other things in my place. Here's what I would say to you. Turn back to me. Turn back to me. Paul's appeal was to find God, do his will. What is God's will? That which is good and acceptable and perfect. And how do we know those things? By looking at the God. I would say to you and I today, this is the last word, is make today a declaration of dependence on our creator, the Lord God Almighty in Christ Jesus. Be reconciled and be forgiven before it's too late. This country has any hope. It's in God. It's in the creator of all of us. As we celebrate our independence today, remember it's dependent upon our creator. God says, I'll forgive you. I long to forgive you. I'd love to forgive you. But you must acknowledge me. You must seek me out. You must repent of your sins. Would you pray with me this morning? Heavenly Father, thank you this morning for this opportunity you've granted to us to once again come unto you, to realize on this day that we celebrate our independence that it's because of you that we have any right to it. It's because of you that we have the, the argument that made that holds us together, that makes it possible for us to even win that war. Let's cry out to you, Lord. In our ignorance and in our arrogance in this country that we have ignored you and left you to the side and cast you out, give nothing but lip service, even that's quickly fading. You're of no consequence, Lord. I pray your mercy upon all of us. I pray that we, your people, who do claim your name and who do recognize you as our creator and as our God is our only sustainer and as our savior that we would cry out to you on behalf of ourselves and the, our, our brothers and sisters, our friends, our family, our neighbors, our fellow countrymen that all that we have done and all that we have accomplished is through you and by you and by your hand that you are a sustainer I pray this this morning Lord in Jesus precious name